Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we are going to learn about integration, uh, in which integration is actually the inverse of differentiation. All right. So we should know that the integration is actually the inverse of integration, in which if we have y as a function, so when we differentiate, it will become dy over dx. But we want to get back to y, so we have to do the integration. So the symbol for integration is something like this. We call this touching. All right. So, uh, and the pair should have like, we, uh, we integrate with respect to what? With respect to x, with respect to t, with respect to k. It depends on the variable that the question is giving to you. So, before we could go far, we should know some techniques of integration. So, I call these techniques of integration for part 1 because we'll proceed with the techniques for part 2 later. So, firstly, we'll have a constant. If we have a constant like this, alright, so like for example, we have 5 and we integrate with respect to x. We have a constant, so we have the 5 and we have x at the back there because it is with respect to x. But don't forget to have plus c. Later on, I will explain why should we have plus c, all right? Because now it is an indefinite integral, all right? So the second one, we have 3, all right? So we'll write 3 first. For the constant technique, we'll just put, all right, if we did a variable is dt with respect to t, so we'll have 3t plus c. Don't forget that plus c should be added at the back there. <coughs> Next, we have negative 1 over 10 dm, all right? So we should look at the number. It's actually negative 1 over 10. That dm is actually with respect to m. So we'll have negative 1 over 10 m plus c, all right? And then we have hx, uh, sorry, integrate h dx. We know that um, h is a, is a function which is uh, independent of x because now it is h, not x. So when we differentiate, uh, when we integrate this, all right, we assume that h now is a uh, constant. So we'll have h, but with respect to what? In this case, with respect to x, so hx plus c, right? So we, we cannot uh, integrate h in this case because h is assumed to be a constant because it's a function which is independent of that variable x. Alright, so this is the constant technique. So we'll go to the second technique, which we call the variable. So uh, if in differentiation, we have variable, right? Suppose we have a variable like, for example, x to, uh, to the power of 4. So the dy over dx will do something like we have to bring this in front and then we'll copy everything. We have minus 1. So we'll have 4x to the power of 3. But in integration, it is uh, way back from the uh, differentiation in which if we have the x squared dx, what we have to do, right? So we have to add first, right? So add the power first. So we have x to the power of 2. What we need to do is to plus 1 first and then we have to divide with the new power. So the new power in this case is actually 2 plus 1. So in this case, 2 plus 1 is actually 3. So don't forget our plus c, alright? So we should simplify this to be x to the power of 3 over 3 plus c. All right. So what if we have 3x to the power of 4? Again, we just copy everything, all right? 3x to the power of 4. What we need to do is to add the power first. x to the power of uh, 4 plus 1. That 4 plus 1 will be added to be 5. So we put 5 at the denominator. And we don't forget the plus c. So we can simplify this to be 3x to the power of 5 over 5 plus c. All right. So next... We have half t squared dt. We don't want to in integrate this, so let me copy it first. All right, t squared. So don't forget that t squared will be uh, added with the power together with 1. And then we have to divide with the new power. In this case, the new power is actually given by 3. That 2 plus 1 will be 3. All right, don't forget that one, uh, sorry, plus c. So we can simplify this. We know that we can multiply 2 together with 3. So we'll get 1 over 6, t to the power of 3 plus c. All right, so that's it. So the first technique is constant technique. And the second technique is variable technique. For constant technique, we just put the variable at the back of the number, all right, behind the number. And then for variable technique, we have to plus 1. And then we have to divide with the new power. Plus 1, divide with the new power. Plus 1, divide with the new power. 
Alright, so let's now go to uh, two types of integral. Alright, so we have uh, into indefinite integral and definite integral. So uh, in Malay, we call this kamiran tak tentu for indefinite. Alright, so this is kamiran tak tentu and this is kamiran tentu. Uh, you better sebut baik-baik because it is kamiran tak tentu, bukan tak tung tuang, tak tung tuang, tak tung tuang. Alright, so it's kamiran tak tentu. Alright, so um, let me show you the difference between these two types of integration. All right. So for indefinite integral, we don't have any values on that integral function. So we call this as integrand. All right. So x to the power of 3. So we'll just uh, integrate like usual. Just now we have learned for variable technique, we have to 3 plus 1 and then we'll divide with the new power, which is 4. And then we have to plus c. So for indefinite integral, we have to add c. All right. Later on, I will explain. Be patient. All right. I'll explain why we have to add c at the back there. All right. So for that negative cos of x dx. All right. Later on, you will learn how to integrate this. Actually, we'll get sine of x right plus c right but for definite integral it's different from the indefinite integral right so we note that we have the value on that integral uh, symbol all right negative uh, 0 to 1 like for example this one 0 to pi over 2 all right so we just uh, integrate like usual like for example x to the power of 3 plus 1 over to the power of new power which is 4 but now we have to substitute with the power uh, with the value which is 0 1 so we have to uh, substitute the value of 0 1 into the x all right so that 1 over 4 is not actually involved with the fraction uh, with the with the substitution of the value so we can take out that 1 over 4 will be something like 1 over 4 x to the power of 4 from 0 to 1 and we know that we don't have plus c now because it is definite integral so we have the value that can be calculated here All right so in this case now we want to substitute the value of 1 first and then only we'll substitute the value of 0 so we'll have something like 1 over 4 and then we'll have 1 to the power of 4 minus 0 to the power of 4 All right in this case we'll get 1 over 4 as the final answer and then same goes to that negative cos of x dx. When we, did in, when we integrate this, we'll get actually the sine of x, right? But the value on the integral is given by 0 and pi over 2, 0 and pi over 2. All right, so now um, what we need to do is, all right, please take note that we don't have that plus c here. Don't put plus c because we have the indefinite uh, number here, right? So we can actually uh, substitute the value of pi over 2 and 0 inside that x so we'll have something like right so now i'll have a sign all right we firstly need to substitute the value of pi over 2 sine pi over 2 and then we have to subtract the value the sign of sine of 0 all right so sine pi over 2 you can even use your calculator but make sure that your calculator is in red in all right so sine of pi over 2 is actually given by 1 all right so sine pi over 2 is given by 1 sine of 0 is given by 0 so 1 minus 0 is actually 1 all right so please note that, that for definite integral we have a finite number here all right we can calculate a number here but for the indefinite integral we don't have uh we, we have the function in terms of x again and but we have it uh, plus c which is plus another constant so the question is the big question is why do we have why do we have to uh, to add c at the back there all right so let me give you this analogy suppose we have the x square plus 3 as a function when we differentiate this we actually get the 2x plus 0 am i right so this is actually 2x but when we want to integrate that 2x all right so when we integrate 2x we will have to add to the power all right add to the power of 1 plus 1 and then divide it by 2 but we don't know what constant has actually been that zero for the differentiation, all right? So if we if we get something like this, this is actually all right, you can cancel two and two, they'll get x square. But actually the initial the initial function is given by x square plus three. So in this case, we actually don't know what value that three, all right, what value, what constant value has become zero. So in this case, we'll just put plus c at the back there. Alright, so that c represents that three or any other constants.
So next, we're going to look at the trigonometric functions for... Right, so we continue with the techniques of integration. In this case, which I call part 2. Right, so it involves the trigonometric functions, logarithmic functions, also exponential functions. All right. So before we could uh, integrate the trigonometric functions, so I want you to recall the techniques for differentiation of the trigonometric functions. So we have this uh, I write here in blue. Right, so if you differentiate sine x, we'll get cos x. Differentiate cos x, we'll get negative sine x. Differentiate tangent x, we'll get negative, sorry, second square of x. Differentiate second x, we'll get second x tangent x. Differentiate cosecant x, we'll get negative cosecant x cotangent x. And differentiate cotangent x, we'll get negative cosecant square x. So, we know that the integration is actually the inverse of differentiation so we want to um, to do this way back from like for example the cos x so we integrate we'll get sin x something like this all right so i'm going to highlight to be sin x so so of course integrate cos x dx will get sine of x but in this case is it indefinite or definite integral so this is indefinite integral we'll have to plus c all right, next, we want to, what do we call it, um, um, integrate the sine of x, right, sine of x dx. So look at what I left with, the negative of cos x. So we'll get negative cos of x plus c, all right. So we have next one is actually second square of x. So I'll get directly tangent of x plus with c and then i want to integrate the second x tangent x so of course i'll get second x plus c all right and then we'll have cosecant x cotangent x so look at what i have here cosecant x cotangent x so i'm left with the negative cosec x so we'll have negative cosec x mm -hmm. plus c and finally we have the cosecant square of x so different uh, sorry integrating this we'll get negative cotangent x so we'll have negative cotangent x plus c all right so this is the actually the basic of integration for uh, trigonometric functions so it's the next one for logarithmic functions if we have like one over x dx it looks like um that we have to use the variable technique but it is not actually right so if because if we if you assume this to be x to the power of negative one dx so we want to use the variable technique will be something like uh, x to the power of all right negative one plus one and then we'll get to uh, the new power is actually negative one plus one so solving this we'll get x to the power of zero over zero so this is not defined because something over zero is not defined here so we cannot use the variable technique for one over x so special case for one over x dx so integrating one over x dx so let's just recall uh firstly really recall if we differentiate all right, so we differentiate the ln x, so we'll get 1 over x. So because integration is the inverse of differentiation, so we inverse the 1 over x, we'll get ln of x, right, ln of x plus c. So in most, uh, in, in some references, they'll just write, x in modulus because that ln should be mm -hmm. for positive values of x only all right so next one exponential but if you don't write that modulus is also okay for me all right next one is the exponential so we know that if it is exponential so for exponential function we have to integrate this and uh, because we know that if we have the differentiation of integration all right so we differentiate this all right so we'll have still have e of x so of course to integrate this also nothing happens so we'll have e of x but in this case it is indefinite integral we have to plus c all right but for e to the power 4x dx so um if we differentiate e to the power 4x, all right, e to the power of 4x. So if we differentiate this, so we'll get 4e to the power 4x. But in this case, we want to integrate this. We'll get e to the power 4x over 4 plus c. So this is basically the basic of uh integration techniques so in this case um, we should recall that we have the constant technique the second one is the variable and then the third one will have trigonometric functions and then we'll have logarithmic and also exponential you should have memorized this before you could understand the next step which we call it as the u substitution so thank you for watching this video